This video will demonstrate the use of Microsoft Power Pivot as a business intelligence tool for the analysis of healthcare data. The healthcare data used is from the CDC Wonder database. This data is provided free of charge to the public for download for statistical purposes. I'll be using the, some of the cancer statistics, and under data request, you'll see that there are some data use restrictions, which I would recommend reviewing if you're going to use this data for your own statistical analysis. In Microsoft Excel 2010, you'll see that I installed the Power Pivot module. And let's open up the Power Pivot window. There's many different ways to pull data into Power Pivot, as many of you probably already know, from databases, from reports, from Azure. I'm going to be pulling all of the data in today from text. So what I've done is I've downloaded a file from the CDC, which is a text file containing some cancer incidence data. Now, the only changes I've made to the data are two things. First of all, it was originally downloaded as a text file, and I saved it as a CSV file. And secondly, the CDC suppresses incidence levels for instances that are below a certain count level so that they can prevent people from trying to identify individuals and violating uh, personal health information uh, laws. So I went ahead and took out the suppressed rows uh, just to make it a little bit easier for analysis purposes. So uh, it should be noted that today's demonstration is not an attempt to basically prove any facts based on the data or find actual trends based on the data, but rather it's a demonstration of how Power Pivot can be valuable for analyzing this type of data. We'll call the friendly connection named Cancer. And we'll go ahead and go to CSV files. And it's stored as Cancer Data 6 here. So everything being done here, once again, is on my 32-bit computer without any connections to additional servers. Let's use the first row as column headers. And you'll see we have leading cancer sites, state, year, gender, count, and population. We'll go ahead and pull that data in. And as you can see, we just pulled in over 11,000 rows. Uh, that's not a whole lot of rows by Power Pivot standard. Uh, Power Pivot can handle hundreds of thousands, if not millions of rows for analysis purposes. But for today's demonstration, it's a large enough data set that it would be very cumbersome to plow through manually and uh, try to filter through and find any kind of um, meaningful trends. And I think you'll see that Power Pivot is extremely valuable for looking at large data sets. Now let's also pull in an additional table. We'll just call it Cancer 2. This additional table just has some demographic information, which we can hook up to the Cancer Data 6 year table. So we'll pull in geography, which will be used as a key to hook up to Cancer Data 6 year uh, as a state, and also region. And it pulled in 52 rows, which is the 50 states plus Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia. Now let's go up here to design, and let's link the two tables together. So we know that the column geography is the same as the column state in Cancer Data 6 here. So let's create that connection, or relationship, rather. Now we're ready to browse this data in an Excel-type format. Now you can look at it in many different ways. It's a pivot table, pivot chart, combination of the two. Um, for today's demonstration, since it's a video, we'll take a look at a pivot chart, because visually it's a little, little bit easier to follow, especially for people who have low-resolution monitors. We'll create a new worksheet. And now we have a Excel-like format to browse this data. We'll take the count value, which is the count of the number of incidences of cancer diagnosis, and we'll pull that into the values field. And we'll also take a look at leading cancer sites and pull that into the axis field. 
Now, there's a granularity issue with leading cancer sites. It is something which in a full BI deployment would be addressed, but since we're dealing with data which was not necessarily designed for a BI type analysis, um, basically we have under leading cancer sites, the all sites combined item, which is going to be a sum of all the other subsets. So we can eliminate that so that it add so that at a roll up level we have uh, proper aggregate numbers. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So now, as you can see, we have the different uh, leading cancer sites for all years, for all states, for all genders, and how many diagnoses were made. Now, let's go ahead and pull in um, the leading cancer sites as a vertical slicer. That's just too many different items to view on one chart for what we're going to be doing right now. So as you can see, we pulled this over as a slicer on the left-hand side. And if we wanted to look at just brain or just breast cancer or just cervical cancer, all of those options are available. Or if you want to look at brain and breast cancer, you can look at those sums also. So let's go ahead and keep just about everything on here. And now let's go ahead and add year. So let's add year to the axis. And as you can see, we can now see the diagnosis instances from that database or from the extract that I made from that database from 2003 through 2008. And once again, over on the left-hand side, if you wanted to, you could um, basically slice and dice by the different leading cancer sites. Let's also add gender. Let's put that on the axis field. And you can see female versus male by year. You can pull it underneath year, and you can see each year side by side uh, by gender. Or we can pull it over to the legends field, and then we can see it uh, visualized in a little bit different way. Then we can also, up here under pivot chart tools, change the chart type. So those bars maybe aren't uh, is visually appealing when you're trying to look at uh, trending. So then we can turn it into a line chart and look at uh, how things are changing over time and with a different visualization method. What's also nice up here, and it's uh, very rudimentary, but we can add, for example, a tread line for if we want to look at a linear tread line for, say, female. Or we can look at error bars with standard deviation. And if you change different types of cancer, you'll see that the uh, standard deviation changes. There's, of course, going to be a larger standard deviation in the total set. And we'll go ahead and select all types of cancer again. Now let's go ahead and move that year uh, data value to the horizontal slicer. And as you can see, now we can also view the data once we turn it back into a bar, so it's visually appealing. We can view that data by year. So let's say we just want to look at just 2008, just 2007, or just 2006, or say 2007, 2008 and 2006. All of those different items are possible and you can do it very quickly and uh, very easily. Now let's add the value of state to the axis. Now you'll see that we have uh, female and male incidences by state for the year 2008 for all leading cancer sites. Now let's add region to the top slicer. There's a lot of states down there in that graph, and it gets a little bit hard to read when you have that much data in one visualization. So by adding region from that linked table, now remember, this is a completely separate data table, which we link together by specifying a key. 
and this would be similar to what a dimension table would be in a full BI deployment. We can sort out by mid-Atlantic states and just look at Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, northeast, south, up here in the north. So you'll see that uh, the ability to slice and dice and to have interactivity with data from different sources becomes very manageable when viewed through PowerPivot. Now let's go ahead and add uh, a little bit of a different visualization to this. So instead of looking at this as a standard bar chart, let's switch it over to a 100% stacked bar chart. Now you'll see we have male and female by state based upon percentage of total diagnoses. We can also switch those around. So we can have female versus male and where the incidences are by state. So basically we're pivoting the data with just a couple of clicks and we're able to have a new perspective on how that data can relate. Okay, let's go back to a regular bar chart. And it's nice being able to see incidents and being able to slice and dice it, drill through, filter, but what does that really mean as far as cancer incidents? The core data table has number of incidents and also population by state. So let's add population to the values. Things get a little bit messy. Then let's go up to that power pivot tab and let's add a new measure. We're going to call this measure rate per 100,000. So what we'll be looking at is the rate of the leading cancers that are selected per 100,000 people uh, within a particular selection. We'll add a little code here, so we'll have sum of count divided by sum of population. And to make the percentage is manageable, we'll times it by 100,000. So we have the rate per 100,000 people opposed to the percentage, since the percentages per year are so small. So now we'll go ahead and we'll pull population out of there now that we've made that calculation. We will look at rate per 100,000 and move that to the secondary axis. Then we'll make it a line chart. So now as you can see, not only do you have the number of diagnoses, but you have the number of diagnoses per 100,000 people for each of those states. And once again, you can browse through. You can look by year. If you wanted to, you could even put the year on the bottom axis and browse by year opposed to state as the, uh, the core value for each bar.